Ambrose, we welcome you to St. Ambrose. Our Mass intention this morning is for Terry Dodd. Please rise. <coughs> Good morning. God is good all and all the time. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So my dear friends, today we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy trinity. One God in three persons, distinct though one in essence. To worthily prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to, to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonder, by war with strong hand and outstretched arm, and break by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? That is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on the earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, that you may have long life on the land, which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the Lord's word is, Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, 
Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, to you, Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Recently, a friend of mine told me about driving along and noticing that he was following a car with these bumper stickers. On the left side, a message that said, atheist and proud of it. On the right, a smiley face and the words, smile, there is no hell. Atheist, no hell. Of course, I can't speak for the messenger, but the message sounds like a sigh of relief. Maybe relief from the burdens of religion. Maybe relief from the fear of damnation. Maybe relief from a vision of God that we wouldn't believe in either. For now, almost 2,000 years, the true faith of Christians is a faith in a God self-revealed as the one only God, who is a communion of three persons. This revelation is not just talk or ideas. It is the revelation of a new way of living a new way to be human. It was made known to us by the one we call God from God, light from light, word of God and son of God, who by the power of the Holy Spirit became one of us. He gave his life to convince us 
of God's love for us, God's desire for our friendship and our happiness. I think I may have mentioned here before that on the grave marker I share with my mother and father, there's written along with our names and our years of birth and death so far. <laughs> I, I did check the obituaries this morning. <laughs> I'm not in there. On our tombstone, there's written a little phrase from the first letter of the Apostle John. After mother's death, dad gave me the job of arranging for the grave marker. When I came home from the monument dealer, I reported to dad that I had selected the stone, the typeface, the decoration, and gave the names as they should appear. So far, so good. Then I told him I asked for a line of scripture on the stone. What? He demanded. What does it say? <laughs> Think of the love the Father has lavished on us. 1 John 3, 1. All right, he said. I am sure glad it was all right. <laughs> Think of the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are, word. That is what we are, and that is what we are becoming. One of the difficulties we believers are challenged to overcome is speaking about the unspeakable because we believe the incredible. God's self-revelation in Jesus Christ found relatively few believers at first, not among the leaders of the people, not among the recognized righteous ones, Rather, among those who had nothing in particular to claim as good deeds or special knowledge. But this, this poverty of anything to be proud of on our own is what enables us to welcome into our reality a God who loves us. Think of the love, loves us enough to die for us and lives to bring grace and peace, lives in us to bring grace and peace to others in our real worlds. I belong to the conference of the St. Vincent de Paul Society that serves mostly people who live around St. Joseph Parish in Kalamazoo. The first goal of such a little group, a conference of the St. Vincent de Paul Society, is that the members become holy or holier, but not holier than thou. <laughs> the means of gaining or increasing holiness for Vincentians is praying and working together to be of help to some people in need and hoping to discover God present in the encounter. We learn to identify God's presence in others, particularly those now in need, by remembering Jesus' words of promise. Whenever you did a kindness for one of the least ones, you did it for me. We also hope that the quality of our patience, respect, kindness, desire to understand, and so on, that this authenticity will in some way bring God to the people whom we serve. The God who loves us enough to lay down his life for us 
lives within us and among us as Christians as we also gradually adopt the way of self-giving love that is our sharing in the life of God. Jesus promised to be with the church always. Partly he does that in and through us as we are more and more open to his work of kindness in and through us. The mystery of the Trinity is not a mystery of a God far off somewhere, but a mystery of God within us and among us. And if that's not mystery enough, tune in next Sunday for the incredible mystery of bread and wine becoming God. Let us now arise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, he rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to joy the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. Through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now present our prayers and our petitions to the Lord. For all who are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may they proclaim the good news with their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may they make decisions based on respect and honor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the suffering people throughout the world, for victims in violence and natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of families who are gathering during the holiday weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and dying, may they experience Christ's presence as loving caregivers minister to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the less fortunate, the homeless, for families separated from one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, our sister parish, our beloved dead, especially those who have died in this country's service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we consider the many blessings God has given us, both large and modest, we will freely share them by reaching out through our contribution, contribution to the bishop's annual appeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Terry Doss, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now ask the intercession of our dear Mother Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with, with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. Not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of, and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, his, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant, we, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Ambrose, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed, departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you and they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Father, in the unity of 
the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be saved. If you are receiving communion, please remain standing in your pew. If you are not receiving communion, please be seated. The priest will come to you. Please keep your nose and mouth covered except when consuming the host. At this time, please remember the sacred host should only be received in the hand. Thank you.
Uh, beginning June 6, new diocesan, diocesan guidelines for attending Mass have been released. Full copies will be posted on their website in the next week. Highlights include wearing masks are now op optional for those who are vaccinated. You may continue to wear a mask if you feel more comfortable. Also, capacity restrictions are lifted. However, a section may, must be designated that requires masks and social distancing for those who feel more comfortable continuing those practices. And here at St. Ambrose, for the time being, the section closest to the tabernacle, that section there, will be reserved for that purpose. Choirs may resume, um, may resume a space allows for social distancing. Indoor and outdoor activities may resume in adherence to the current state guidelines. Clergy and anyone assisting with Holy Communion are to be masked during the distribution of Holy Communion. Cry rooms and nurseries remain closed and cleaning and safety protocols must be followed. Um, here's some exciting news. We've reached 79% of our bishops annual appeal with the help of 142 families. To help St. Ambrose successfully achieve this year's parish goal, we're excited to announce a new matching gift program. It's been offered by an anonymous donor, so now all new or additional gifts to this year's appeal will be matched dollar for dollar until the parish goal is achieved. If your budget is tight, a pledge donation of $300 can be made in 10 monthly payments of $30. Please fill out your pledge card or in pew envelope and return it to the rectory office or in the Sunday collection as soon as possible. Let's finish out this campaign. Thanks to our anonymous parishioner, Remember, no gift is too small or too large. Thank you. The priests and deacons will recess as usual. Please remain in your seat until an usher releases your row, your row to exit. This will begin from the rear. Please maintain social distancing as you exit the building, and please do not gather in groups outside. Thank you. I now invite you to the prayer of St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only son. In you Mary placed her trust, with you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and mind. As we confess your eternal Holy Trinity, and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I want to thank our anonymous parishioner who has uh, offered to help us, has given a challenge, so let us take the challenge and I know we will uh, we'll make it. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Have a wonderful day.